In today's video, we're going to try to build a desktop fire tornado using easily available materials. Guys, if you've been around the internet for a long time, there's a decent chance you've seen some video of fire tornadoes. They can occur naturally, they can occur by surrounding a fire pit and a lot of fans. I think slow-mo guys did a video where they got some really cool footage of a really big one. Well, we're gonna try and go the opposite of that. We're going to try to make a very small desktop fire tornado. All I'm hearing is portable fire. Just about, we're, that's pretty much what we're doing. And I guess portable fire is not that hard. You could have a lighter, but that's not a tornado. I want a portable fire tornado. Here's the basic idea. Based on a set of instructions on Instructables, we're going to try to build a desktop fire tornado, allowing you to harness the really cool effect without all of the danger or buying 10 fans. So I think we had a few different people submit this as an idea, something they wanted to see if it was possible. As I was looking around, I found a set of plans on Instructables by a guy named Benjamin Paris for his version of a desktop fire tornado. I thought it looked really cool and I did want to modify a few things with it, but a lot of what we're going with is very similar to his design. We should have a link to that down in the description, but let's take a look at what we're going to need. The fuel, we've got a couple different types of fuel over here. Generally though, these are cabinet bumpers. You put them on the inside of cabinet doors so when they close, you'd, you know, just have them slam shut. There's a little bit of cushion. Uh, we've got a couple different sizes and shapes of those. This is just a clear glass tube. It's sold as a type of vase, like a candle tube. I got mine online and I think it was like $12 for a set of two. This is a USB powered computer fan. And what I like about it is it has three speed settings. If I set this right here, you can kind of see it goes right to the very edges nice of the case on this fan and then i went ahead and i got the you know i got a set of four shot glasses these are about one or two ounce glasses these ones are made of stainless steel which i thought made a good container for fuel and we're actually going to modify these a little bit to prevent overheating and then we've got some tongue depressors and some electrical tape so the first thing that we are going to do is actually we're going to go straight to these cabinet bumpers, sticking these onto each of the four corners. And then after we've stuck them onto the four corners, we're going to do another one right on top of the first one on each of the four corners. So now with those feet, we've lifted the fan higher up off the ground and we may in fact go back and lift it even higher. The reason we're doing this is we need just the right amount of airflow traveling through this fan. If there's too little, we won't get a nice vortex. If there's too much, well, we also won't get a nice vortex. Either one just messes it up. They just, one just makes it really thin and one almost blows it out. In the original instructions on the Instructables page, Benjamin Paris made a wire mesh in a circle that sort of held the glass in place. Okay. And while I'm sure that would work just fine, I wanted to try a different method. We're actually just going to be using these tongue depressors held in place with some tape. Let's take uh, two of these tongue depressors and just cut them right in half. Okay. Here's the idea, and we may adjust this later. This is just to get a feel for the height. So we're going to tape one of these sticks onto each side, and because we have such a close fit, that's actually just gonna hold it right in place on our square fan. Because we like it with the stick touching the table. It adds another level of support, even though it's gonna be squeezing the fan box pretty well. Having it touch the table I think does offer another level of support and if we do add more feet then we're going to want to take these off and lower them even farther. All right so now with those sticks in place the glass just stays right where it is. It's not terribly sturdy right now because we only used a tiny bit of tape. Right now we're just trying to figure out the height. If this is going to end up being the right height for us then we can secure it a little bit better later otherwise we need to adjust heights and then we can secure it. We've got our shot glasses and we could just fill these with fuel, put them in there, and that would work okay. However, it gets really, really hot. We're gonna cut one of these cups down. We're gonna shorten it and leave some tabs so that they can nest one slightly inside the other, just about halfway down, and then we'll be able to fill the other cup with water to just keep everything cooler. All right, I drew these lines on here, and I'm gonna just try and cut all those out using grinder. Now I've got this sort of like pot with handles look. I'm just gonna trim those handles down. They only need to be, you know, between half and one centimeter tall. I used the grinder on all of that, cut it down, 
Now I'm just hitting it with a file really quick to remove any sharp edges that I might run into. Now this just straight looks like a dollhouse cooking pot. Now we can take our little dollhouse copper pot, sit it in there, see if it's pushing all the way down. Now we're going to fill that with some, this is 91% isopropyl alcohol, so this is rubbing alcohol. This, this metal grill is fairly slidey and the bottom of this cup is also fairly slidey. We don't really want it sliding off, so we're going to use some more of our little bumpers. So what I'm doing, I've got this, this is the sticky side and I'm putting it sticky side up. I'm gonna take four of these and put them so that they're being held in place by the bars of our grill here. Now, making sure that the bottom of this cup is dry, I'm gonna set it down onto those and stick it to them. So now this cup has four sticky pads on the bottom of it and those pads will line up with the bars in the grill to make it so it doesn't really move anywhere. It, it's just kind of held in place and doesn't slide around. So with our little pot in our little cup of water, there is isopropyl alcohol. Go ahead and light that on fire with your long match. I've just been holding this. There you go. It's burning. It's not burning much. Isopropyl alcohol isn't super bright. We're going to now fit this over and we can turn on the fan and hopefully get something of a tornado. Go into low. Oh, definitely did some, oh, it's a dancing fire. That's me. I'm so in love already. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take a look at the height. If I lift this up more, do we get a better vortex or a worse vortex? Yeah, yep. So you can see I lift it too much and now there's like nothing. If I set it all the way down, we're getting it pretty good. You see that, that right there in the middle is kind of what we're, we're going for, yeah. So we're going to do one more and that will almost certainly bring it up too high, but we do have a method that we're going to use to build gates that sort of let you control exactly how much air is getting in. So that's looking pretty good. Let's see what happens if we choke off just a little bit of the airflow. That's honestly just a matter of aesthetics. I like this really tiny where you can see those spirals. Nate's going for a really large tornado in this glass. My, my main goal is height. Okay, and this is why that little reservoir he's made is so important. Yeah, this cup is a tiny bit warm. That's about it. So now that we have figured out the total height for the fan, mm -hmm. we're going to reattach all of these side supports a little bit lower down so they're in contact with the floor. So that works pretty well, mm -hmm. but as we said, this high up, you can't actually have too much airflow and we want ways to control that. So what we're gonna do is take a couple more of our sticks and cut them down again. But we're just going to fit that right in here, put it in, slide your gate in, and that will give you a lot of control over how much air is getting into your fan. Fire. Yeah. Right, let's test our little Airflow adjusters. That's too much. Back those off a bit. No, I think we got a good amount. The low setting on the fan, to me, has always been plenty of speed. 20 minutes and you have a portable fire tornado. Yeah, this whole thing goes together quick. There's a little bit of troubleshooting if you want to get into that with the exact height and the exact amount of airflow that you do or do not let in the sides. Callie has decided that she wants to use alcohol to cook her marshmallow. I think you're gonna get a lot of smoke. This is not burning cleanly in any way, shape, or form. So here's a good warning for you. Do not cook with your desktop fire tornado. So you wanted to try different color fires as well. Methanol burns blue, but it burns a very, very pale blue. That's often hard to see. So we've done regular fire, we've done blue fire. I want Maleficent fire. Green fire. Green fire. Let's do it. We are now adding boric acid into our methanol. It looks like every Disney villain's dream. Woo! Boom. Fire, yes! Beautiful. Oh, I love how well the green works. Look at that. What do you think? Desktop fire tornado. Not bad, huh? I'm gonna make seven. What we used 
by far as the majority of this build, we may have modified it a little bit. Both methods work very well, I think. And also, if you like these little fire tornadoes, you should definitely check out Backyard Scientist. Made a video a while back showing how to make a fire tornado with no moving parts. It's quite clever, and if you like this sort of thing, definitely go check that out. Guys, that's it for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.